Hi, my name is Matthias Falk, and I'm one of the professors in the biology department at Lehigh University. I would like to welcome you to the credit student open house. In the next few win minutes, I would like to share my research with you. I am a cell biologist and I'm interested in direct cell to cell communication. Have you ever thought about why your heart beats synchronously or why your liver is not filling your whole body? Or why your nose is not as long as the nose of an elephant? Well, that is because cells communicate with each other. And that is especially important during embryonic development. Um, cells are at least as sophisticated in communicating like we, as we are. They have developed many different mechanisms. And one of them is direct cell-to-cell -cell communication. Direct cell-to-cell -cell communication is provided by gap junction channels that bridge the surface membranes of adjacent cells. And by that, link the cells of a tissue together. These channels, these gap junction channels, form clusters in the membrane. Um, they are assembled from a protein called connexin. And we can see these clusters by electron microscopy and also by fluorescence light microscopy, labeled here with the arrows along the plasma membrane of the cell. We do have an atomic resolution structure of gap junction channels that helps to ask molecular questions. Over the past years, we have carefully characterized the biosynthesis and degradation of gap junctions. And we found that gap junctions, quite unusual, are internalized as a whole into one of the two coupled cells. This um, results in the transfer of plasma membrane and cytoplasm from one cell to the other. We have characterized on molecular basis, the turnover mechanism, machinery, and found that a number of molecular switches prepare gap junctions for internalization. This includes binding and release of a scaffolding protein, CO1, phosphorylation and dephosphorylation on critical amino acids in the carboxy terminal domain of the connexin protein, connexin 43, ubiquitination, and finally recruitment of the clathrin mediated endocytosis machinery that then internalizes gap junctions. Why is this important? Why is it important to understand the turnover of gap junctions? Well, research over the past years has shown that mutations in the connexin proteins can cause severe human diseases. And of course, in addition, we want to increase human knowledge because only then we can understand what is going wrong in disease. Um, current interests in the Falk lab are threefold. We are continuing to characterize molecular mechanisms of gap junction biosynthesis and turnover. And we are doing this in cells in culture. We are asking whether impaired gap junction turnover could cause human disease or maybe is even embryonic lethal. We are using the CEPRAFISH model system to address this question. Um, it's an ideal system, for example, because of, of the transparency of the embryos that allow us to investigate this question. And 
Finally, we are asking whether SARS-CoV-2 and other viruses could use internalizing gap junctions as a vehicle to move directly from one cell to the other. We are currently using the mouse hepatitis virus A59 as a model, which is a representative virus for coronavirus disease. In the Falk lab, we use molecular biology, and that includes CRISPR-Cas9 gene edi editing, biochemistry and immunological techniques, and lots of imaging, fluorescence imaging, even in living cells. In collaboration with my collaborator, Mark Terasaki at UConn, we are also doing electron microscopy with one pill im in the department. We do molecular modeling with Julie Haas in the department, electrophysiology, and with Kathy Iovine in the department, we perform the zebrafish work in her zebrafish facility. If you found this research of interest to you or any research really of um, any of my colleagues in the department, I would encourage you that you apply to our graduate program. Thank you for listening and have a great rest of the day. Mm -hmm.